If you are a parent and you feel on your heart that you want to explore different options outside of the traditional public school system, this video is for you. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley. Welcome back to my channel. I am a mom of almost four and I'm getting ready to start my homeschool journey. And I also used to be a public school teacher. And in this video, I just want to talk about why I am choosing to homeschool my kids despite being a public school teacher. Um, okay, so I'm in a very squeaky chair. <laughs> very sorry. So I want to start by saying that this is not a one size fits all. I don't think that homeschooling is right for every family you, because it's a huge undertaking. You have to be willing to put in the work. You have to want to do it. And if that is just simply not something you're interested in doing, totally fine. But I'm talking to you if you feel like you just have it on your heart to give it a shot and see if this is something that would work better for your children and your family. I was a public school teacher. I taught in middle school for uh, about four years and I enjoyed it quite a bit. I loved it. When I was in college, my minor was in education and one of the things that we had to do in one of our education classes was write a paper about our educational philosophy. And this is when I really hunkered down and started thinking about what my values are, why I wanna be a teacher, what do I truly believe in when it comes to education. And after a lot of thought, my number one thing was that I believe that children, I believe that people should be taught to be creative. That is the number one thing that I feel like, like is important when it comes to education. And it's because creativity teaches you so many things. It's not just about like coming up with different ideas and different art like when we think about creativity we think about like art work and you know arts and crafts yeah you know things like that it can start there but really the basis of creativity is that it's your ability to create original innovative unique ideas and when and, and when you do that it allows you to think critically to think independently to just really form your own opinion and i think that is really more that's that's ultimately why i feel like being teaching creativity is so important i want to teach my students my kids how important it is to be reflective and ask questions and ask why and form their own thoughts and have reasons that back up what it is that they believe and it all starts with encouraging them to come up with unique and different ideas coming up with different ways to look at things and exploring that and um i was a dance teacher and so creating choreography was like my number one thing that i wanted to teach my students and it's challenging because if you think about when you are in school you are told what to learn you are taught what the answers are you are taught how to get to those answers and there are components of of traditional school that teach you to think independently and to think critically but i think when you think about the overarching theme of we teach to the test especially here in texas anyway everyone kind of has to teach to the test because it's such a big deal and when you do that it takes away a lot of the opportunities for teachers to do different kinds of activities that allow their students to have more hands-on learning and to do more projects that allow them to dive into their own interests and, and things like that because they're having to learn how to do well on a standardized test. And that's really like the basis of why I feel like traditional school doesn't work. I hope to see some kind of change in the system. I think it's, I don't even know what that would look like, but I think having to teach to a test is really like the cancer of it all. So anyway, it starts there. That's kind of where I come from as a former educator is that I really value innovation, critical thinking, creativity, 
just teaching kids how to be independent and how to have autonomy over their lives. If you take that, it kind of bleeds out into everything. And I'm the kind of person where I look at all of the options I have to me and I think, okay, well, which option do I feel like would be the best for me and my family. For example, when it comes to having kids, what option do I feel is best for me and my family? Do I go to work and bring in a second stream of income and like send my kids off to daycare or do I stay home and raise them? And I feel like that's the option that I feel like is better for my family. When it came to childbirth, do I want to do in hospital with an OB or do I want to go this route and go with the midwife and be out of a hospital? And after doing my research, kind of comparing between the two, I chose out of hospital. And it's the same thing with school, especially now I have experience being in the public school system. There are a lot of things that are great about traditional school, but there are a lot of things that I would like to change and take into my own hands, especially with having my own kids. And so I'm comparing the two and I'm choosing the one that I feel that is better for my family. I think a big theme between those things that I just mentioned is that I want freedom and I want flexibility. That's a big component of why I've chosen the things that I've chosen. With homeschooling, there's so much I can dive into about it. Even though I haven't like, it's not like I've been homeschooling for 15 years, like a lot of moms that are out there on the internet, those people are wonderful resources. I'm just speaking simply from the research that I've done and observing my experience as a former educator. I really want them to take charge of what it is that they want to learn about and use that as a way to connect different subjects back to what they're currently interested in. I want them to have experiences that they can't have inside of school. You know, I want them to be able to go and explore and go on different trips and meet different kinds of people and explore their own interests and hobbies and see what kind of things that they can come up with when they're not confined to being in a structure where you have to wait on others to finish their work before you can move on to the next thing. I want to be able to cover a certain subject or unit or idea and then be able to take time on it if we need to or be able to cover it and then make sure that they have a good understanding of it and then move on if they're ready to move on and really be able to personalize their education to their learning style and their interests and their needs. Uh, all of that is so exciting to me <laughs> and you're probably like, wow, that sounds like a lot, like way too much for me. If if that's how you feel it's totally okay i totally get it i kind of feel like homeschooling is an extension of motherhood an extension of parenthood because you're already teaching your kids so many things as a parent and you're teaching them skills you're also teaching them what values are important to you and i kind of feel like i i just want to continue to do that i want to be able to pick up and travel whenever i want we want to go on a road trip and and learn about different things along the way. I want to be able to do that. If we want to focus on learning certain subjects that we're interested in, I want to be able to do that. And I want to be able to use their interests as an anchor for the different field trips and activities and lessons that we do that include what it is they're interested in. I want them to grow up learning how to be curious and how to find the answers on their own. I also feel like I should mention that if my kids are ever interested in going to public school, I think that's fine. I think ultimately I want to do what they feel is best for them. Uh, I mean, obviously within reason, right? But if they feel like they really want the public school experience and they want to know what it's like to be in a classroom with other kids, I'm fully supportive of that. I think it's important that we give them the options to try things out and see how they like it and kind of be able to to switch gears if we need to. If they decide they want to stay because they really like the structure of school and they like being able to do all these different extracurriculars, I think that's great. I appreciate that that's an option. But if they decide that this is not for them and that they learn way better doing things at their own pace and around the things that they're interested in, I want to be able to have that as an option too. I'm really excited to go on this journey with my kiddos and take you along with me and, and show you what it is that we do and how we're going about it and there's so many things that 
I want to see from other homeschoolers that I don't, I guess I see enough of maybe. I just wanna be able to kind of pull back the curtain a little bit and share our experience, you know? So right now my oldest is preschool age so right now we really need to focus on socialization read more and kind of use that as the basis of learning more about letters and kind of start building that foundation for reading she enjoys doing arts and crafts and using markers and, and pencils and things like that. I think what I'm gonna start doing is using that as a way to help her learn how to write her name. So we'll see what that looks like. Sometimes I feel like I'm curious about what other kids are doing in preschool and kids are like writing their name and this and that. And I'm like, oh, we haven't started learning that at all. And so I feel like I need to keep up with the Joneses and I need to be doing what they're doing. I also have to tell myself, okay, well, I'll try. I'll see if she's interested in learning how to write her name, but if she's not, I'm not gonna push it because she'll want to learn to write her name at some point. You know, I'm not gonna stress out about it. And that's kind of something that I have to tell myself regularly is that it's okay to to see what other people are doing just to see where other people are at there's also a great set of standards for the country as far as what different expectations you have at certain grade levels that you can use as a resource i think that's all fine and great it, it kind of gives you a guideline of what you can go off of but i also feel like you don't have to do those specific things at that specific time. If they're not interested in it and you're kind of forcefully making them do it, are they really learning it? Probably not. If you have any questions about anything related to homeschooling or if you're a homeschooler, I'd love to get to know you more and what style of homeschooling you do because there's so many different ways you can homeschool. I feel called to unschool, which is just child-led learning. I'm not really interested in following a curriculum or anything like that, but I am fascinated by like the Charlotte Mason method, the Waldorf and the Montessori. There's lots of different things you can do. You can go the curriculum route and that's cool too. But I personally feel like unschooling or child-led learning is what resonates with me the most as an educator and a parent. And so I think that's what we're gonna start with. Thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.